Let's continue our discussion about economic growth. As we said in the previous video, here, uh, the economic growth is an application of the production possibility frontier we learned before. Here, we want to focus on how an economy can grow, okay? or the possible ways to boost to boost an economy. Uh, we're going to talk about the two groups of the countries because the possible ways or the policies they're going to use to promote economic growth would be quite different. Uh, the first group is developing countries or poor or middle income countries. For them, the most important thing is catch up growth. By that, we mean for some reasons, they have been falling behind for decades. Now they're trying to catch up. Okay. Um, on the PPF graph, this means they are moving from a place far below its own frontier. That's what we call inefficiency, right? To a place relatively more efficient. Okay. And specifically, uh, the economic policies they should use is to remove all the barriers on the market. For example, in many poor countries, you would find a lot of price control policies. So they control the food price, like we discussed before, right? The famine in Africa. They also control the energy price, the telecommunication price. Um, so if they could remove these price controls, the market will produce more. Their economy can expand very quickly. Another example of the appropriate economic policies is in many developing countries, you would find that their state-owned enterprises monopolized many markets. So they controlled, for example, a lot of natural resources, oil, coal, diamond, and they become the largest producers on the market. So they control the quantity and the price. If the government can remove the entry barriers on these markets so that more private firms can come in, they will bring in more competitions. They will increase the efficiency of the entire market so that they can produce more. Okay. Uh, for Developed countries, it's going to be quite different. Now, let's um, switch to the whiteboard so that we can demonstrate the difference between these two groups of the country. And later, we're going to come back here. Okay. All right. Um, so here on your left hand side, we use India as an example of developing countries. So we all know that India in the past um, few decades uh, did pretty well in terms of promoting economic prosperity. Okay? Um, it's one of the superstars um, in terms of economic growth. Now, what happened in India was um, right after the World War II, uh, the country followed a centrally planned uh, economy or economic policies, okay? That led to a very low efficiency. So at the beginning, so we're talking about like um, four or five decades ago. So India actually started far below its own PPF. So let's call this point A, okay? And in the past um, uh, three or four decades, what India did was basically moving from point A to another place relative, relatively closer to its own frontier, B here. Okay. Again, as we said before, even the developed countries like the United States, um, it's hard for us to believe um, 
the stay on the PPF, okay? Because there's always some resources got uh, wasted. So probably the very good situation we could consider is the country can get closer to its own PPF, like point B here, okay? So what we are demonstrating here is a catch-up growth. Simply speaking, that means from a far below PPF position, like A, to a much closer uh, to its own frontier, like B, okay? Remember, during this process, there's no requirement for extra resources, productive resources, okay? In other words, they don't need extra workers, um, or machinery or equipment or land. They just lead the better ways to organize these resources so that they can produce more, okay? On your right-hand side, we're looking at um, the example of a developed country like the United States, okay? Once again, we put X on the horizontal axis and Y on the vertical, uh, which represent two general uh, goods or services. You can put anything you want over there. Okay. Now, for the United States, like we said before, probably, you know, the, the current situation um, is we already stay pretty close to our own um, frontier. Okay. We still see some people out there uh, unemployed and they, they don't have the job, but they're looking for one. We still see some land. Um, idle, see some uh, machinery equipment not operating, but compared to the entire size of our economy, we find that the wasted resources are relatively small. So we believe we are closer, at least compared to developing countries, we're closer to our own frontier. Now, in the future, if we want to see continuous economic growth, then we have to get more resources, okay? In other words, we need more labor, more land, more capital, and more technologies. If we get more resources, what we're going to see on the graph is the outward shift of the PPF, okay? So here, it's PPF prime, okay? So we're... If we have to find one point representing, for example, um, the U.S. economy two decades later, we would probably pick another point, again, very close to the new frontier. Let's say this is a point B here, okay? So from today all the way to two decades later, what we're going to see is these, okay? Again, it's, it's, it looks like the same, you know, movement from A to B but it's fundamentally different because here it requires the outward shift of PPF. And the economic intuition behind this is it requires the input of new or extra productive resources. All right. Now, as we just discussed here, um, so for the developed countries, um, we're going to see an outward shift of the curve. Now, in reality, what does that mean? Or what exactly a government could do to promote the economic growth? That's what we're going to discuss in the next video. Okay. So here, in this video, we basically talk about the theory, the PPF, or how the PPF could demonstrate two different kinds of economic growth. Uh, in the next one, we're going to hit the ground and look at exactly, you know, in the real world, what we need to do.